I'm going to look at a couple of Memorex converter boxes. These are ATSC to NC NTSC converter uh, boxes for free off-air TV. I've got three of them here. They have three different problems. We're going to look at these ones. Uh, this is going to be a short version of the video, and I'm going to do the entire, all the unedited stuff is going to go to Patreon. Let's check this out. So when you have one of these old TVs like this, of course, they're not going to receive anything off-air because these are analog. And you can see this one's looking a lot better now than it was when I first started on it. That's... Uh, programming this is coming off of my uh, my existing cable box through my modulator network that I've got in the house the brightness is a little too high here we'll just bring the brightness down just a smidge it's a little better that's the news channel that I've got on here and some of my in-house channels. You can see the, the detail has come right back on this set now. Fine-tuning. These are channels that I run inside the house here, but to receive off-air on this, if you don't have cable, or you, well, you, cable won't do you anything any good now anyway because the analog channels are gone. You have to have a cable box from the cable company which will have an analog output but if you just want to receive off-air TV then you need to use a box like this. This is an off-air box. This one's broken so we're going to fix it. It has your antenna input and it has your NTSC output and that'll work fine with a little color TV or a little black and white set just like that. We're going to get this one going and I'm going to hook it up to this black and white TV and uh, we're going to look at some old vintage programming from the oldies stations. I put these box. I've got a couple of them. I'm going to fix a few of them. But um, I was using these things for years when, when most of my televisions were analog sets and did not have digital tuners built in. So I used these to receive the off-air stations and fed them into modulators. Um, what's happened since then is, of course, most of my TVs have been replaced with TVs that have got off-air tuners. And when these boxes, these things aren't very reliable, I was leaving them run 24 hours a day. And when they started to fail, I took them out of service and uh, just rely on the digital tuner built in. But uh, there's a couple channels that have come up now that are not available on my cable service. And um, I've still got a couple televisions that don't have a digital tuner built in. So I think I might like to get one of these going anyway so that I can put one channel that uh, has got some pretty good programming on it on... Uh, on my in-house cable. So let's uh, get into this Memorex and uh, we'll get it going and see how it works on this little old TV. Now since these have been serviced before and I know that the the failure on this is likely going to be very similar to what's happened in the past it's the power supplies. They are just absolute rubbish on these sets. The power supplies have been rebuilt on I've got, say I've got, I've got three of these Memorex and I have an Apex, and the Apex, um, a, a MOSFET blew apart in it, and I haven't bothered to fix it, but I might. And uh, these ones here, the, the big problem with these ones is uh, filter capacitors just, they blow up. So I'm thinking that's probably all that's wrong with this one again, is the filter caps. The same ones that have failed on it already twice. This will be the third time. they, they seem to go for a couple years and then uh, they dry up and it's it's probably just due to the design of these things they are the heat is concentrated so here's the power supply and I can pretty much guarantee that the, the problem with this thing is going to be these caps in here have gone bad again I think probably We'll uh, test them and change them. As I say, I, I'd like to get one box working. If I get more than one working, great. But one one working will will be great because uh, I I can put it on a modulator that I've got and uh, you know then have an extra station that I can pick up throughout the house on any TV. So I'll start by removing the power supply again. Unplug this and just remove the screws and then the power board should lift right out on this and then I can work on it.
should lift out. There we go. Okay, here's the power board. And yeah, it's going to be these. I'm, I guarantee it's going to be these caps. It just is such a bad design. I guess they, they, they build up a fair bit of heat in here and all the parts crammed together. And as you notice, of course, they don't have a lot in terms of ventilation. That, that uh, chip is going to get pretty warm and these units do get quite warm when they're running. These were cheap, right? These were the ones that you know sold for like 30 or 40 bucks back when they, uh, and they were, a lot of them were subsidized by the American government. They gave people coupons to get them because of the mandated um, changeover from analog to digital. This was for, for people with the older TVs. So, um, they're not as popular as they used to be. I think they can probably still get these things around, but uh, these things used to be a dime a dozen, and I picked these ones up for, I forget what I paid for them. I think I paid 15 or 20 bucks. They weren't expensive, but I say they, they certainly have not been very reliable over the years. And it's always been the same, the same parts going bad. So I grabbed the ESR meter, we'll measure the ESR, I guarantee that it's going to be through the roof, even though there's no, there's no physical signs of the caps bulging, that's what it's going to be. Well, let's look at the, uh, some of the ESR on these, these caps and just see whether, which ones are bad. Hmm. That doesn't look too bad. Eight. I'm going to jump a bit hit ahead here because I can tell you right now these caps are not bad. The secondary caps all test good. I'm going to jump ahead, we'll get right down to where the problem is on this one because I'm going to do a, a full release as a Patreon release to show all the steps I had to go through and what I checked on these because there's a lot of footage and it just goes too long. I think this might be the problem and it's not the caps. Watch this coil. I do believe that those connections are are broken right there. I'm going to put the original ones back in, fix that problem, and uh, we'll try this thing. Also, I noticed that this plug is disintegrating here as well, which was another common problem with these. So that pin may have been coming loose because the caps that were in there do not test bad. They actually test in good shape, all of them. So we'll put the pa put the caps back in and um, fix that connection on that coil and try this thing again and see whether it works. Should be noted for the viewers that are watching this on the regular YouTube channel, you're not missing anything, right? The, the Patreon only re release is just going to show all the, the steps I got to, to find this. And I'll put all the footage up for all three of the boxes I fixed, whereas the three separate boxes, I'm gonna do a release for the second and the third as three shortened videos because they had three separate faults. For my Patreon uh, viewers, I'll put all three of them together as one production to give you a little more in depth of what I had to get to and give you kind of a bonus for being a member. You know, that one, that coil that was bad is right here. You see it. right here so we're gonna fix that and that looks like the trace has actually got a crack in it right there so I'm just gonna bridge a piece of wire over to the uh, the capacitor next to it and I'm gonna bridge it to this cap as well put the, because these are in parallel so, you got a piece of wire here. Oops, didn't want that to happen. What happens when you put too much heat into the wire, it just comes off. Let's 
solder it right back to the diode here. See, this screw is also loose when I took it apart. So it may have worked its way loose just over the years. And that's a ground screw, so that may have been part of the problem. But I think it was that coil that had the solder connection had fractured. Is I think probably what was wrong with it this time. Let's so get this plug back in here and get that last pin down into the board where it belongs. Because these plugs fall apart. I have another one that the plug fell apart on and I actually had to solder all the wires in place. Okay, now that's connected. I'm just going to connect this up to my, my plasma TV at the moment. It's on. And just see whether I get any menus come up on this when I power it up. And then we'll hook up an antenna to it and see if it'll pull in any signals. Okay, I got a red light. That's a good sign. Oh, DTV tuner boot up loading. That's a good sign because it wasn't doing that before. It wasn't actually doing anything before. So let me just connect the antenna and see whether this thing will actually pull any channels in. This is just an indoor antenna, so I don't know what it's going to be like as far as as uh, reception goes. See, this is all I get when I power it up, which is more than I got before. I didn't get to this stage before. I get my DTV tuner boot up loading well interesting okay I get the menu for um, the setup let's try an auto scan and see whether we find any channels now the antenna I've got on there's not a very good one but it will hopefully pick up something it's one of these flat plane hang in the window type and it's just hanging up against the wall so whether it's gonna actually pick anything up or not we'll find out Got a, it's got an active power supply, so it does have power. It's not looking good. Should have found a bunch of channels. I can get about, uh, I think I can get 14 or 15 channels here. It hasn't found anything yet. And it doesn't look like it's going to find anything. It's, uh, no channels so maybe the tuner itself is shot okay so I'm finding some channels now so I know the tuner is working on this we'll let it continue its scan I just hooked it up to my rooftop antenna so obviously that little flat antenna that I've got in here is um, NFG no good so we'll let this finish the scan and then we'll see what channels I can pull in on this little tuner box <laughs> well, I got a nice freeze frame the uh, signal on this cable, I've got it split a few times in the shop here, and it's just not quite strong enough to pull in a digital signal on this this device, that's for sure. Because I've got uh, the feed coming in here is split. Uh, this is normally just used with my modulator signal, and this, the signal here is split, uh, what is it, about four or five ways. So it's not going to be very strong uh, on this cable. Not like if I put this in my in my media closet right plugged into the the, the uh, antenna. So I've now put the unit in my closet. I'm just feeding it into here. It's hooked up to my antenna without going through you know a bunch of extra splitters and stuff. This is connected up to one of my antennas. As you can see, wow, got 10 channels found so far. This is just feeding in here on a modulated uh, signal. That's why the picture is not as clear. And uh, we'll see what this thing gets and see what type of channels it picks up. 
but that's the difference between a good signal and a bad one. These are the ones I was kind of interested in. Like, um, uh, there's a bunch of channels here, the 12.1 to 12.5. The only one that's carried on our local cable is this one here, 12.3 MeTV. These other ones here are not carried, so I'm thinking uh, I might like to put a couple of these modulators in just so that I can run a couple of these channels onto onto my analog network and uh, put these channels on. This is actually a different antenna. This is one facing towards the south to pick up the American channels because my other antenna faces north. So the 12.1 to 12.5 don't come in the greatest on my televisions, my digital sets. But this antenna is facing the other direction, so this one looks like it might work. Let's just uh, take a look at what channels I can get. So this is the channel Heroes and Icons that I've now got picking it up off air. So there's five channels and uh, I'm going to set this thing back up. Now that I've got it working I'm going to set this back up on one of my modulated channels now that I've got this little unit working. But these are perfect for these old televisions that don't have a digital tuner built in. Even on this little black and white set it looks great. It's a bind gold filled with new and exclusive interviews. So if you got one of these little old sets, a little black and white TV or a, a little small color set that you want to use and you want to pick up off air, you just need one of those uh, digital converter boxes. So say there are a dime a dozen, you can pick the things up dirt cheap and that's all you need. That and an antenna and then you can get the free programming on your old TV. Anyway, now that I've got one of these modulators or one of these tuners working, I'm going to check the other two Memorex ones because they both failed as well and I'm I'm wondering whether maybe it was the same problem on them that it wasn't capacitors this time it was something else in the power supply because this in this case it was a broken connection that went bad on one of the little coils and uh, killed the entire unit anyway that's that back fixed we'll uh, catch you in the next one thanks for watching